100 years ago, a promise was made by British Foreign Secretary Arthur James Balfour. With a stroke of his pen, he committed to signing over the land of Palestine to the Zionist Federation so they could create a Jewish state of their own. In the Balfour Declaration, the British government stated it clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of the existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine. But that assurance never materialised, and a century of pain and suffering followed, something Balfour's ancestors say he could never have predicted. I'm sure Arthur would say this is unacceptable, you know, that um, there's got to be more more help for the Palestinians. The conflict that began then still exists today, with the killing and injuring of thousands of people on both sides. The Palestinians say that uh, the Balfour Declar Declaration was a tragedy. That wasn't a tragedy. What's been tragic is their refusal to accept this 100 years later. I hope they change their mind, because if they do, we can move forward finally to making peace between our two peoples. The declaration only contained 67 words, but for many Palestinians, they just want to hear one more. Sorry. In April, 13,600 people signed a petition that was sent to the British Parliament requesting an apology. وأن تعترفوا بدولة فلسطين إذا شئتم أن تكون بريطانيا دولة ذات سياسة عادلة. We will certainly mark the centenary with pride, and uh, I'm also uh, pleased at the good trade relations and other relationships that we have with Israel and that we have are building on and enhancing. We also must be conscious of the sensitivities that some people do have about the Balfour Declaration, and we recognise that there is more work to be done. All of these points of view will be expressed in the UK, Israel and Palestine on Thursday by groups who either support or reject the declaration. But no matter how people choose to perceive Balfour's intention, the simple fact is he rewrote the history of the Middle East. Vanessa Keneally, The Newsmakers. Well, joining me now from Birmingham in the UK is Kamal Hawash. He's a member of the executive committee of the Palestine Solidarity Campaign and from West Jerusalem, Avi Meyer. He is the former spokesman for the Israeli military. Thanks both so much for joining us. Uh, let me begin with you, Avi, actually. The key line in the Balfour Declaration that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, you have to admit it is clear that that primary condition hasn't been met. So how fair is it to really celebrate this declaration? Well, look, I think that the, the principle uh, of the matter is quite clear. And I actually don't disagree uh, with Professor uh, Hawash that there should be an apology. But I think that apology should come uh, from Palestinian leaders to the Palestinian people. I agree with you. That part of the declaration has not yet been realized. And that is due to the repeated rejection uh, on the part of the Palestinian leadership uh, of any kind of solution that would uh, bring about the existence of a Jewish state. From 1936 with the Peel Commission, 1947 with the Partition Plan, 2000, uh, the uh, Camp David Accords, and 2008, the negotiations between Prime Minister Olmert and President Abbas, there have been so many opportunities to create a Palestinian state, to realize the Palestinian right to self-determination alongside a Jewish state which would realize Jewish self-determination, and unfortunately, they have not seized any of those opportunities. Okay, so Kamal Hawash, is the constant Palestinian resistance to the Israeli state more to blame than the Balfour Declaration or anything perhaps the Israelis have done since? Well, no, I mean, you have to remember that in 1917, first of all, Britain wasn't even in Palestine. Uh, secondly, uh, Lord Balfour offered uh, Palestine uh, to a people who weren't there without consulting the people who were there. And the people who were there were a significant people, the Palestinian people who inhabited the land from the river to the sea. They were not consulted about whether they would mind a state for a, a people who didn't come from that land be created in their homeland. Uh, and I liken it to the following. Imagine if Britain had decided to offer Wales to the Zionist movement as a homeland for the Jewish people. 
would the Welsh have accepted it? Would they have agreed to the partition of their land? Of course they wouldn't have. So the whole principle of saying the Palestinians should have accepted that another people could come and inhabit their land was in itself wrong, and Britain should never have made that promise. Ari, that is an interesting and fair point. I mean, how did Britain ever really have the legitimacy as a colonial power that was really only there for about 30 years or so in some 3,000 years of history to make this kind of declaration? Well, look, I, I think that Professor Hawash is uh, interpreting the facts in a creative way. In fact, there were Jews uh, in the land at that time, as there have been for over 2,500 years. Uh, and the notion that Jews are somehow foreign to this land is actually quite offensive. Um, at the end of the day, what we're looking at is the question of self-determination. Jews and Palestinians both have that right. And the question is whether Professor Hawash joins me in upholding that right for both Jews and Palestinians. I'm willing to stand up and say that I acknowledge and support the realization of the Palestinian right to self-determination. Are you, Professor Hawash, willing to say the same about the Jews? Do you agree that the Jewish people have a right to self-determination in their ancestral homeland, which is, in fact, the land of Israel? But Ari, let me just ask you again. What about the British government's right, its legitimacy, 100 years ago, to declare the state of Israel? That was Mr. Hawash's point there, is that this was, from the very beginning, the UK had no right to declare the state of Israel. Well, during the course of the First World War and in its aftermath, uh, Britain and France divided up the entire Middle East. Uh, and countries such as Syria, Lebanon, uh, Transjordan, later Jordan were created. Uh, are we to do away with all of those countries or only the Jewish one? Uh, you know, we have to look at the facts. The fact of the matter is that in 1922, when the League of Nations assigned uh, Palestine to uh, Britain to have a mandate, uh, the Balfour Declaration was included in that mandate. It became part of international law. There was an international consensus, in fact, that there should be a Jewish homeland in uh, this part of the world. Um, that was later reinforced in the 1947 UN Partition Plan. The principle, again, is two states for two peoples, a Jewish state for the Jewish people and a Palestinian state for the Palestinian people. I stand behind that. I'm not sure that Mr. Hawash does. Okay, Mr. Hawash, go ahead. Well, again, we go back to the beginning, the starting point. So uh, the, the Zionists asked Britain to support them, secure a, a Jewish homeland in Palestine. Britain should have said no because it is inhabited by another people. And if uh, Britain wanted to help the Jewish people uh, create a, a state for themselves, it should have done charity begins at home. It could have offered them uh, uh, Wales as a place to set up their homeland. So this preposterous idea that just because uh, Jews wanted a homeland in Palestine, in my homeland, that we should have just agreed to it is preposterous. What I do agree with Avi about is quite simple. Yes, there were some Jews there. They made up 10 percent of the po uh, population in Palestine in 1917, which means, one, they were integrated into Palestine, as Christians and Muslims were, as they were uh, integrated into Syria, into uh, the, the, the Iraq, into Yemen, into various parts of the Middle East. We were living much more happily then than after this uh, colonial state was created in our homeland. So if uh, he, he accepts the fact that there were Jews there who, who were not moved in from, from abroad en masse, uh, and he's someone who is very keen about talking about the demographic threat that the Palestinians pose. Imagine the threat demographically that was posed to the Palestinian people when mass migration was made to our homeland without our consent. No other nation would have accepted it then. Okay, Ari, I, if I can ask you uh, a separate question, and it's the, the notion of some analyst to say and to criticize the very reasons at the beginning that the UK wanted to create the State of Israel, that it was looking to build its own homemade ally in a region where it was starting to have a number of very serious enemies. What do you make of that? I mean, why do you feel the UK had to take what seemingly at the time was such personal interest in creating the State of Israel? Well, I think Britain was upholding uh, a principle that is shared by all nations. In fact, it lies at the very basis of the UN Charter, uh, that all peoples have a, an inherent right to self-determination, the Jewish people and the Palestinian people alike. And so when Britain issued the, the Balfour Declaration, it was simply acting in accordance with that principle. Um, and I agree with you. I think that in, in many respects, Israel is an outpost uh, of, of democracy 
uh, in this region. Um, we wish that there would be uh, additional countries in this, con in this uh, area that would share the values that we uphold here. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that this is an occasion to celebrate. It's certainly not one that calls for any sort of an apology. Okay. Um, Kamal, I, I can let you respond quickly. If not, I'd like to, to move on to another issue. Go ahead. What, what, values, what values does this state hold? ESQUA, uh, uh, an organization of, uh, as part of the UN, conducted a report earlier this year and declared that Israel was practicing apartheid against the Palestinian people as a whole. Israel occupies illegally uh, the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and uh, Gaza. Israel has imprisoned 7,000 people on average every year. Israel uh, constructs uh, barriers through a wall that goes into, deep inside the Palestinian areas. But even more importantly, this morning, the Deputy Foreign Minister of Israel was speaking here on the BBC and said, there is no occupation. Israel is, is, is ours. The land is ours, all of it. So will Avi condemn the Foreign Minister for not acknowledging that there is an illegal occupation and saying that Israel uh, should exist over the whole land. He talks about two states, but that's what the Deputy Foreign Minister of Israel said today. Will you condemn her, Avi? If, if I might respond to that briefly. First of all, the policy that has been articulated by this Prime Minister repeatedly uh, is that he supports a two-state solution. Um, he supports the establishment of a Palestinian state. Um, and that is his policy and has been for many years now. Uh, yet again, Professor uh, Hawash is being creative with the facts. Uh, the UN what did report he say, that he referenced uh, at, the at the beginning of, the of his remarks. The UN, the UN, excuse me, sir, 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 I gave you the opportunity to speak. That's what your prime minister said. Please, please permit yeah, me, yeah, but, but, please, but Professor Hawash, okay, permit let, me. Let Abhi please, Professor Hawash, Professor Hawash, please permit me to respond. The UN report that you referenced at the beginning of your remarks was, in fact, rescinded by the UN Secretary General, who said that he had not granted uh, the, the body that had created it the authority to do so. The body that uh, created it was composed entirely uh, of Arab states. It was biased to begin with. And the UN said that it would not stand behind that report. So please, sir, please be honest with the facts. He be didn't honest disagree with That is with what we're contents. talking about. Excuse me? That he didn't disagree. And will you acknowledge that your prime minister said during the elections in 2015, there will not be a Palestinian state on my watch? Am I telling you an untruth here, I think or he did he say that? I think that if he did say that, he said it from a place of pain. And he it's simply did say a reflection that. I mean, you know of the, the reality of the reality of the reality of the reality that we have seen for the past 80 years of Palestinian rejectionism. If so, it is in so fact true that he made that, that comment, for it is states. simply from a point of sadness that we wish that there could be a two-state solution in which a Palestinian state could arise alongside the Jewish state of Israel. Unfortunately, the current Palestinian leadership and Palestinian leadership for the past so 80 you years and longer what the, have not actually, permitted that to happen. You know yourself, Avi, what you are saying is a complete fabrication. He did say that. It was one of the most notable. There were two things he said during that election. One, uh, asked people to come out because the Arabs were going to come out and vote in force. And secondly, there will not be a Palestinian state on my watch. So that absolutely destroys your argument that he is for two states. Professor Hawash, stand up right now and say, I join you, Avi, in calling for the establishment of a Palestinian state alongside the Jewish state of Israel. Can you do that? The Palestinian Can you leadership, do that, sir? through the Oslo Accords, recognized Israel. Can you do that, sir? The idea was can that you, there would be a Palestinian state Can you say that I agree 19, that the Jewish people have a right to self-determination uh, alongside the me. Palestinian state? Do not yes talk or no, over sir. Me, please. Yes or no, do not sir. Do you accept? Over me. Do this not is what talk we're talking about over here. Me. Do not talk over me. Do not talk over me. I have just explained that a Palestinian state should have emerged in 1998 through the Oslo Accords. The Palestinians did everything they needed to for that to happen, but there was never a real desire for a Palestinian state to be created. And your prime minister said it, and I'll repeat it again, there will be no Palestinian state on my watch. And your uh, minister of education, Naftali Bennett, said that the, all the land should be annexed. Uh, Hotovli this morning said there is no occupation, the, that, that the whole land is ours. So the spin you're trying to put on it, okay. which comes from typical Israeli Hasbara, are just complete 
lies. Okay. You should be apologizing sir, to the you Palestinian and I, people sir, you for and what I, Israel you did and I are when talking it was to each other. The two of you will you obviously I, sir, you and I are talking to each other. agree on this will issue, you, at least in the two minutes that we, we have and left. We I'd, I'd like to ask just uh, one question and bring it back to the centennial now of the Balfour uh, Declaration. Kamal Hawash, Palestinians want an apology from the British government. Do you think they'll get one? Do you think it's deserved? First of all, it is definitely deserved because we've just explained they promised our homeland without our consent to a people who weren't there. But secondly, Britain even today should have realized that the state that's been created as a result of the Balfour Declaration is not a state that anyone should be proud of, let alone Britain. Democracy in Israel is only offered to the Jews. It is not offered to the whole population that lives between uh, the river and, and the sea. So there should be an apology. But more than that, they should at the very least recognize Palestine so that this idea that keeps, they keep on supporting of two states, recognize Palestine and say we're going to impose sanctions on Israel until it stops building settlements and removes its illegal settlers from the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza. After all, that is only 22% of our historic homeland, which the Palestinian leadership has accepted. Do we really have to, uh, to negotiate on anything lower than that? Okay, Avi, do you think it will be detrimental then to Theresa May's government to see her meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today and is in essence celebrating the anniversary of the Balfour Declaration when so many people do feel that at the very least the Palestinians are owed some kind of apology from the British government? I think that Britain should be celebrating this occasion with pride as it has said that it will do. Um, it's most unfortunate that Professor Hawash uh, did not take the opportunity to depart from the many decades of Palestinian objectionism uh, and stand with me and say that both Jews and Palestinians have a right to self-determination. That is what is at issue here. That is what he opposes. That is what this entire campaign opposes. The, the Balfour Declaration did not negate Palestinian rights. In fact, it said that it upholds Palestinian rights. The idea, though, that only Palestinians have rights and Jews do not I think is what is unacceptable. That, unfortunately, is what Professor Hawash is trying to convey. And that is something that people of decency around the world should reject as they celebrate that this occasion. That is a complete misrepresentation uh, of my marking, view. For marking, I for reject marking your misrepresentation the, uh, the, of my the, view. For marking 100 years, There's 100 years to celebrate of about upholding Balfour Jewish national rights alongside Palestinian national rights in this land. Kamal Hawash, do you believe sincerely in the two-state solution? I cannot understand how a two-state solution can be realized now when you consider that there are 700,000 uh, Israeli settlers living illegally in the West Bank. Uh, when, we, when they reach a million... You were asked a direct uh, question. Do in, you in accept the, the principle years, of a two-state solution, Will there still be an opportunity for a two-state solution? I'm afraid people do you accept uh, who the legitimacy haven't been to the of land do not Israel, realize sir. that there is no room for a Palestinian state to emerge, and it is one that's been destroyed. You were asked if you agree in principle. Has been destroyed do you agree by in Israel. principle and to I a two-state solution, sir? The Israeli Prime Minister himself said there will be no Palestinian state on my watch. So if Israel says the there Prime won't Minister be a Palestinian has said that his policy state, is the two-state solution, be directing his, his, sir, his anger at sir, his leadership rather than sir, I'm not uh, repeatedly. The Angry. I'm uh, simply sad. That I'm sad that you Ministry won't join me, sir. I'm sad that you won't join me in upholding both Jewish and Palestinian national rights. Sir, stand up now I'll, I'll and say, I'll, let, let I let agree tell you that the Jews uh, have a right Abby, to self-determination okay. alongside the Palestinians. I think, as a Muslim, as a Muslim, I have every right to go on pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina. Christians have every right to go and visit uh, all their holy sites. Okay. After all, if you think Jews uniquely should have one plot of land forever, then nobody will accept that. And why Kamal haven't Hawash, Christians, you are, you are haven't saying the exact opposite of what you're saying? We won't be able to Jews reach any and sort of consensus here have today. A right to I Do encourage they not? both of you to perhaps speak more clearly at a table together and try to find some kind of common ground because it's devastating to see how I'd far apart these two parties can be uh, today. But thank you both so much for joining us on this edition of the Newsmakers. Unfortunately, we're out of time.